my lovely, lovely imps. Uh, about three months ago, I covered a story. A story about Dungeons and Dragons. A story about betrayal of the corporate type. In fact, you could actually see this video right here. Look, Tyranny of the Wizards. A drama mama on the Dungeons and Dragons community. I was pretty proud of that. We went really in depth and we talked about the company that makes Dungeons and Dragons, which is known as Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast is owned by the toy company called Hasbro. And uh, let's just say that Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast have been engaged in recent memory in a lot of unethical behavior, a lot of really unethical behavior. Um, in fact, I think this week they might have actually outdone themselves with regard to bad PR. Like, I think they might have done, like, maybe the worst PR possible. I'm not sure. The Dungeons & Dragons uh, uh, OGL drama. Uh, for those who aren't aware, I'm just going to summarize what happened. You can actually go watch that video, The Drama Mama on Dungeons & Dragons, if you'd like to. Um... In fact, I'll even post a link to it right here. So anybody who's watching this video in the future, all you gotta do is just follow that link, type that link that's right down there, and you can actually go watch the video. You can get all the info. But basically what happened is, Wizards of the Coast uh, decided to invalidate a, a permanent license uh, that they previously published. This license uh, is what basically all Dungeons & Dragons and Dungeons & Dragons related uh, products are built off of. It was specifically designed because they wanted more people to play Dungeons & Dragons. You see, many years ago, Dungeons & Dragons wasn't nearly as popular as it is now. Now, there are gigantic uh, TV shows that are uh, 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 that are you know like Critical Role and D20 and all of these um, wild shows. Dungeons and Dragons is crazy popular. It used to be seen as a weird nerd thing, and um, basically they created this thing called the OGL, the Open Game License. And what it was supposed to do was it was supposed to say, hey. Uh, we invented these rules and we maintain the ability to create Dungeons and Dragons. However, if you want to use the tools, the basic like gameplay mechanics that we use to play Dungeons and Dragons to create supplementary materials, you can. It was a measure of good faith. Um, as it turns out, you actually can do that anyway, of course, uh, because rules can't be copyrighted or controlled in that way under American copyright law. But that's aside from the point. The OGL was designed to, you know, uh, uh, to, to extend the hand and say, hey, let's get more people in here. Let's get some more creative eyes that are outside of our company. And of course it was successful. Tons and tons of different people have decided to make stuff for a system that they love. And Dungeons and Dragons and the broader, uh, type of game, the tabletop role-playing experience, has become unbelievably popular. Nobody could have expected how popular that it was. And Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro decided to retroactively invalidate that license, a license which explicitly stated that it was supposed to extend in perpetuity. Basically, they were threatening uh, 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 years upon years of goodwill built up with a community that is much bigger than them. And you have to understand that since that license was released, there has been a complete divergence of ideas. Um, there are things that were originally based off of the open game license that you that still use the open game li license so they can be compatible, but that were just no longer that 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 no longer have anything to do with Dungeons and Dragons. They're their own thing. They own. They just have a shared genetics, kind of like how birds and dinosaurs are related to each other. This was a disgusting move by them, and it actually caused a complete community revolt. 
arguably uh, a, a, a revolt so severe that it might permanently damage Wizards of the Coast, uh, 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 their business model. Um, some of the most popular shows that previously had actual partnerships with Wizards of the Coast, free advertising have completely, um, completely removed themselves from the Dungeons and Dragons branding entirely, um, which is wild. They basically lost their biggest advertisers because they decided to be absolutely insanely greedy about it. Now, all of this is just giving you context for why Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro has been in hot water recently. Um, there's also been a whole bunch of controversy with another product that is made by Wizards of the Coast, one that many of you will be familiar with, called Magic the Gathering. Uh, almost everyone who lives in America has at some point in their life either played Magic the Gathering or hung out with people while they were playing Magic the Gathering or at least are familiar with it. It is one of the most popular card games in the history of card gaming. It is unbelievably popular, okay? It is like the most, at least it has been, the most popular trading card game for a long time. And there's been a lot of controversy around it because of changes that have been made from sort of the highest levels of the corporate structure of Wizards of the Coast. Um, and it just hit a new low, okay? What we're about to talk about is actually so shocking and hilarious. I can't even believe that I'm going to, that I actually have to talk about it. So without any further ado, let's enjoy a little article from Polygon. Magic publishers sent Pinkerton agents to a YouTuber's house to retrieve leaked cards. A toy company sent Pinkerton agents to a YouTuber's house over magical wizard cards. And we're going to get into the whole story here in just a second. Some of you might be sitting here going, well, what, what's a Pinkerton? The Pinkertons uh, are one of the most infamous uh, 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 private militarized corporations uh, in the history of the world. They are notorious for having been brutal strike breakers at the turn of the uh, 20th century, to the degree that if we were to go to their Wikipedia page, you would actually be able to scroll through the number of times their agents have been uh, convicted of murdering people. In fact, most recently, one of their agents in 2022, or sorry, in 2020, just three years ago, uh, one of their agents was convicted for gunning down a unarmed protester at an Amazon protest. So a bunch of workers were protesting the working conditions at Amazon, and one of the armed freaks that the, that the Pinkertons uh, 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 employed uh, killed a guy. Not kidding you. That happened in 2020. They are also infamous uh, for their participation in brutal strike breaking, uh, where they actually just opened fire into crowds of people. Um, and of course, they are uh, somewhat infamous for being the corporation that is most heavily tied uh, to private security. Um, it's, it's actually wild. They've sort of distanced their name from a lot of their other uh, partnerships, but uh, most security firms that you're that you might be familiar with have some ties to the Pinkertons. Either are directly owned currently by the Pinkertons, or were previously owned by the Pinkertons. In fact, the Pinkertons were so notoriously murderous that at one point the federal government passed a law that was called the Anti-Pinkerton Act. Not kidding you. That is an actual law that is, at least in part, still on the books. The Pinkertons are notoriously brutal, notoriously insane, and also uh, 
notoriously terrifying. So when, when I tell you that Wizards of the Coast dispatched Pinkerton agents to a YouTuber's house over magical wizard cards, you might find yourself going, holy fucking shit. But it gets even more wild, okay? Let's, let's jump into the article. Let's hear what actually happened, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, Sol Gracchus says... Um, this is actually a good point. Sol Gracchus says, uh, the Pinkertons are currently a part of the company known as Securitas. You guys probably know, you, if, if you don't, if the name doesn't ring a bell, uh, Securitas, you will know them, here, hold on, you'll know them by their mark. Let me show you, uh, you guys have definitely seen this. Here, hold on, let me show you the, the image, okay? You guys have definitely seen this right here, okay? Uh, usually you will see this either on the side of a fake police car or on the armband of a guy wearing a khaki vest, okay? Um, Securitas is like the largest security uh, firm in America. Now, the funny thing is, even though on paper, Securitas owns the Pinkertons, the Pinkertons actually splintered off and changed their name to create Securitas and then they absorbed the Pinkertons. So Securitas is actually the Pinkertons. They just changed their name and now they have a sub company that is still called the Pinkertons. You have to keep that in mind. Um, yeah. Securitas works malls, universities, uh, 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 concerts, everything. They're like one of the biggest security firms. Also, Securitas is notorious for the fact that they're, uh, they use, <laughs> they use military, a military ranking system, even though they're not a military, technically. Uh, when you're in the, when you're in the job, they will refer to each other as like privates and lieutenants and colonels and things like that, um, which sort of gives you an idea of the internal mentality of the company. Yeah. It's a uh, very LARPy uh, and, you know, uh, uh, again, it was just a way for Pinkertons to escape their own bad reputation. But anyway, let's read the story, shall we? When Magic the Gathering cards turned up on YouTube last week, publisher Wizards of the Coast sent private investigators from Pinkerton to retrieve them. The resulting confrontation reportedly frightened one woman to tears and resulted in the confiscation of nearly two dozen boxes of magical wizard cards. I'm, I'm, I'm adding my own commentary there. By private investigators. Wizards confirmed the incident did indeed happen to Polygon. Meanwhile, the presenter denies anything illegal occurred. At some point on April 20th, YouTube channel Old, Old School MTG published a video showing the, the opening of a box of collector booster packs from March of the Machine, The Aftermath, just one of 22 boxes uh, said to have been purchased from an acquaintance. Little had been revealed about the set so far, which is not expected to arrive in stores until May 12th. Didn't this happen in inscription? It did! It's actually very funny. Uh, there's a video game that we played, which is sort of framed like a creepypasta. And at the end, uh, not to be spoilers for inscription, but yes, this is the plot of inscription that a game company sent murderous armed agents after a random YouTuber because they discovered a cursed set of cards. But in this case, there is no cursed set of cards. It's just normal, pathetic wizard gaming cards. So... Yes, it is actually the plot of a creepypasta video game playing out in real life. Little has been, oh yeah, as a result, the video was quickly downloaded and used as fuel for reaction videos all over the internet. Later on April 2022, Old School uh, MTG published another video explaining what had happened. I got up and recorded some videos, the presenter said in the video. Right after I got done with the video, my dog started barking because somebody was knocking at the door. I came out and my wife was answering the door and it was the Pinkertons. 
The name Pinkerton should ring a bell for all American readers. The modern day Pinkertons are descended from the original Pinkerton Detective Agency, which was founded in Chicago more than 170 years ago. The company has played a role in major historical events, not the least of which was its stint as a violent strike-breaking private paramilitary force in the late 19th and early 20th century. Pinkerton, now a subsidiary of Paragon Systems, currently counts security and loss prevention among its many services. Wizards confirmed to Polygon that the Pinkertons were indeed involved in the incident. The presenter at Old School MTG described the agents as big heavy hitter guys who frightened his wife. The Pinkertons arrived with contact information from someone at Wizards of the Coast and after speaking with them, the presenter said they made the decision to pull their videos down. Uh, the Pinkertons were very apologetic about making my wife cry first thing in the morning by sending these heavy-duty lawmen to come collect stuff and to talk about stolen products and jail time, the presenter said. But they don't believe we stole anything, which we didn't. I don't know if they believe anybody stole anything or if it was just an accident that they said that. But they wanted the product back so they could try and figure out where the hole was and they could plug the hole. Wizards of the F Coast can confirm that yes, this is a part of their investigation, a Wizards of the po Coast representative told Polygon. So these fake cops showed up and said, we're gonna slam you in jail, turn over the stolen goods. But nothing was stolen. They're not cops. And nobody can go to jail over it. They were literally hired by Wizards' own uh, admission to investigate, aka to intimidate and terrorize. Literally just for intimidation. Over magic cards. Over a single video about magic cards that was released a few weeks, three weeks too early. It's actually insane to me that anybody could even have any respect left for Wizards of the Coast or for Hasbro after this deranged nightmare. I just, I can't even imagine, uh, like, getting your cards and doing an opening and then having fucking thugs show up at your door who are like, GIVE US THE CARDS OR WE'RE GONNA SLAM YOU IN JAIL at your wife who didn't have anything to do with the cards over the equi- over fucking basically Pokemon cards. <laughs> actually uh, actually unbelievable the presenter goes on to extrapolate what they think happened it's possible they say that someone somewhere in the distribution chain accidentally mistook march of machine product for march of the machine the aftermath somebody screwed up and sent out the wrong case to the gentleman that i bought the boxes off of because when he sold me the stuff he was willing to sell me march of the machine boxes not aftermath so these guys hired armed investigators to go threaten this guy's wife to confiscate product that wasn't stolen because Fucking Wizards of the Coast is so lazy that they named two products the same thing and somebody got them mixed up. It's actually a beggar's belief that this is something that I'm actually having to talk about. Oh no, we accidentally sent you the, the, the wrong box of our identically named trash product. We shoveled it, oh, we shoveled the wrong garbage into the mailbox for you. And now we're gonna fucking threaten you. And yes, by the way, the Pinkertons are armed. Pinkerton agents show up with guns, okay? Engaging private investigators to receive, retrieve stolen or missing trading cards is not a particularly new or novel strategy. Just last week, Polygon reported another similar incident dating back to 2021 involving products from Pokemon, which were retrieved with the help of a private investigator. The presenter in this instance said in the video that the person they spoke with from Wizards seemed to understand that they were not at fault. In fact, they were e eager to compensate the YouTuber for the purchase of the cards, potentially in the form of a more appropriate replacement product anybody who's used my footage they added you'll probably want to take that down I no longer have the product 
old school MTG said, the Pinkertons took everything to take back to W for, to Wizards of the Coast. That includes all of the empty boxes and wrappers. I don't even have a token to show for my efforts, he added with a laugh, before noting his channel had recently doubled in viewership. Well, thank God for that, at least. After the publication of this article, Wizards of the Coast reached out to Polygon with the following statement. Okay, what we're about to read is hilarious, okay? But also, keep in mind, remember, he didn't steal anything. He didn't do anything wrong. Somebody somewhere at a company goofed up and they sent agents to go track it down and confiscate what he paid for absolutely deranged and stupid just laughably stupid as a part of an investigation into the unauthorized distribution and disclosure of embargoed product we repeatedly attempted to contact an individual who had received unreleased cards after that outreach was unsuccessful an investigator visited him and asked that he reached out as part of our investigation and return the embargoed product and packaging he agreed to do both the unreleased product will be replaced by us with the product intended to purchase. We appreciate the individual's cooperation and the investigation is ongoing. They're investigating their own fuck up, but they're trying to make it seem like, like, uh, like something bad actually happened here. When all that happened is some stupid fucking cards for babies got sent out a little too early. Absolutely hilarious to me. But also, it's kind of telling. It's kind of telling the state of affairs that we're in, where uh, corporations for, for little toys and games have gotten so unbelievably disconnected from what they're actually making that they think that it's appropriate to try and send an armed private investigator from one of the most notorious firms on the planet to go shake down some random YouTuber. And by the way, I'm just going to take a moment here. Uh, people who are still buying and playing with, with Wizards of the Coast products, just know, like, I don't care. I don't really care what people buy or spend their money on all that much. Just know that this is the company that you're dealing with. This is the mentality going on. This is the future that they're envisioning for their product. A product where uh, where they're so paranoid about time, about Magic the Gathering has a new set release every five seconds. There's like, the, the, the release rate for new Magic the Gathering set rates is actually impossible to keep up with. And yet they're so obsessed with their bottom line that this is the path that they choose. It's literally every couple months there's a new set coming out. And as we discussed in the in the previous one, this company has shown that they have no they have no standards. There is no bottom for how low Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast are willing to go. They're willing to invalidate uh, 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 permanent licenses. They're willing to shoot themselves in the foot. The future for Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast is worse relations with their community uh, uh, and, and increasingly lower quality products as they fixate on deranged behavior like this. Actually off the rails. Maya Ostro says, you don't understand. He found a floppy disk buried in the middle of the forest and it has a curse on it. We're just trying to get it back. Yeah, exactly. I got, you don't understand, he almost got trapped in the game, and he would have had to play the game to save his soul. Absolutely deranged. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested to see just how much embarrassing stuff uh, uh, is, is continually uh, revealed. Uh, because if they're willing to send the, the Pinkertons, and unapologetic mind you notice that this little embarrassing statement doesn't even apologize for their deranged behavior it acts as though they're investigating a crime unauthorized distribution and disclosure of embargoed product somebody accidentally sent the wrong product of your two nearly identical card packs and they're like, we're hunting down. We're trying to plug the leak in our system. Somebody's been leaking our little... That was a level three gnome. 
That was a that was a level three gnome. You think we can just you think we can just let our gnomes get out into the world? No, we have to plug this leak now. Or what? What's next? The centaurs? The dragons? They'll be stealing our orbs. And then, of course, the truth is nobody stole anything, and these are fucking cards. What a what a what a what an absolute embarrassment of a company Wizards of the Coast has become. Just just there's just nothing going on inside there. Literal cardboard. It was probably just some under overworked, underpaid warehouse worker who had to pee and ended up misreading the box. Yep. And actually, what's even funnier is that this is not in this article, but in other in other video that I watched, there's there's uh there's been uh, whispers on the web that it actually might not have even been at the factory that it may have been just a mix up at a local game store, which means that this is even more insane. That they went to the YouTuber's house to do all this. They didn't send like a nice corporate representative to be like, hey, sorry, uh, we saw your video. Um, can we get our cards back? They didn't, they, no, they send guys with, with the, who armed up like this who go, hey, it'd be, a, it'd be a disaster if something was to happen to your wife. It'd be a shame if we'd have to slap your wife in jail, wouldn't it be? And it was probably some local game store that made the error. Absolutely deranged. Anyway. What else can I say? Uh, fuck Wizards of the Coast. Uh, fuck Hasbro. Absolute embarrassment of a company. Absolute embarrassing behavior. They didn't even issue an apology. All they said was... Yeah, we have a... There's been some gnomes. We think there's been an escape of gnomes from our magical... Our magical wilder, wilderness facility. Stupid. Uh, anyway, if you had fun learning about the derangement of Wizards of the Coast, uh, go ahead and smack that subscribe button, ring the bell, and leave me a comment with your thoughts. Are you a fan of D&D? Are you a fan of Magic the Gathering? How does this make you feel? Tell me down below. And thank you for being an imp. There we go.